Alright Panther fans, so as is usually the case, as soon as I put out the video that I did last night, Panthers made a move. This is probably the move on defense. We eventually have to sign Lundell and see what that number is to let us know um, what kind of money we have left. And of course, we still need, is is the guy that's going to play next to Lundell already on the roster or do we need to add Sam Escovich's money to the cap? So. Nate Schmidt, he gets bought out by Winnipeg and signs for us for $5 an hour, minimum wage. Back when I was a kid, I think minimum wage was $3.35 an hour. I think that's it. So, um, yes, in, in case you're wondering, yes, it's OEL all over again. Here's the guy. I think he's the same age. I think he's 32. Um, his peak was, you know, a few years ago. He actually got uh, drafted by Vegas from Washington. He actually was taken in the expansion draft. He's not a huge offensive guy. You don't see any real big numbers there, uh, but he still has been playing a lot. Uh, the, his time on ice has dropped. So at his peak, he was getting about 22 minutes uh, a night, and the last few years, it's been like 20, then 18, and then like 16 and a half this last season. So the one thing that I would say to Nate is get training now, and we're also going to have to talk to him about his hairline. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's let's get him the Sam Bennett treatment. Okay, I looked at a picture. I'm like, no, we can't we can't have you running around South Beach and Los Olas looking like that, Nate. Shave it. Let's get some facial hair going. We got to get you fixed up. But this is uh, the quintessential Zito move, um, and it's so nice. It is just so nice because in years past, right, we would have kind of been panicking, like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And now, like, no matter what happens, we're just like. Just let him cook. Just let him cook, man. Zito just finds a way, and he found a way again. $800,000 <laughs> because he's getting paid by Winnipeg. The same thing as OEL. Um, now, another thing that I thought about that could be of a benefit to us, um, at the end of the finals, uh, there was a few games there where I was mentioning how Rodriguez, Tarasenko, and OEL especially, it really seemed like those were the guys that had the most jump, the most legs. Oddly enough, those were all guys that did not go through long runs with us the season before. So now we have completely rebuilt the fourth line. And defensively, you're going to have Schmidt out there. You're probably going to have Balinskis out there. Uh, and neither one of those guys have had, you know, have been on the long runs. So I'm very curious to see if at the end of however far we get next year, I'm curious to see if any of those guys are the ones with the most jump. But in terms of where he's going to slide in on the defense, I mean, look, it's early. It's, it's obviously we have no idea. We don't know if he's the last piece. I think the assumption would be that he'd be on the second pair, but there's never any guarantee there. He might be... Um, Remember, OEL was on the bottom pair once everybody came back and was healthy. So you might see a situation where you've got Schmidt with Kulikov as the bottom pair and Polinskis on the second pair with Mikola. I would not, I wouldn't put it past them, right? I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers, but I'm not going to worry about it because every year um, there has been that guy or a couple of guys that Zito picks up and we're kind of, you know, we've got question marks. Can this guy pull it off? Can this guy do it? Can this guy? And, and yeah, I mean, just like Forsling developed, um, I'm not saying Belinskis is going to be Forsling, but I mean, we, he played well for us, right? He's not lighting the world on fire, but we don't need that. All we need are guys, it, genuinely speaking, and I hate for him to catch a stray here, but really the only thing we need from our defensemen is don't be Mackenzie Weger. That's really all we need, right? Is just play the system, be smart, and and you'll fit right in. So, do I? I'm not gonna sit here and guarantee that we're done, but I think we. I think that might be it. Let's see: Forsling, Ekblad, uh, Balinskis, Bornfoot, who I'm still mispronouncing, Kulikov, and Schmidt. Wait a minute, there's gotta be more than that's only six. Hold on, let me count that again: <laughs> Forsling, Ekblad, Mikola, Schmidt, Kulikov. Balinskis, Bornfoot. That's seven. Um, I mean, maybe we pick up one more, one more minimum wage, guys. But for us, they're all minimum wage. But I, I think 
somewhere in those seven, I think we've got our top six. I, I would be surprised if there's another move coming unless somehow he's going to trade Ekblad and Spencer Knight for Kale McCarr. I keep hoping, but I don't think it's... I don't, uh, it's not looking likely. <laughs> it's not looking likely. Um, all right, Panther fans. Just short and sweet this morning. That people had asked me um, in the comments for yesterday's video what I think. I think it's the quintessential Zito move. I think he'll fit right in. we got to get him a head shave and, and get him in. I'm not saying he's out of shape, but... 22 minutes, 20 minutes, then 18, then 16. That That's a pattern, so we're going to need to get him. Uh, who's he going to train with? We'll just get him training with Bennett, right? Yeah, that's a, well, all right. <laughs> it, it's early. What do you want from me, okay? The dog is actually, he's let me sleep two nights in a row here, more than three hours, so my brain cells are starting to fire up. All right, we'll see you again soon.